Welcome back to this episode of Health Reversion. I'm Adrian, and in this episode, we're gonna have an in-depth look into vitamin B6, what its role is in the body, any signs of toxicity, symptoms of deficiency, the highest whole food sources, so not supplements, but whole foods, and there's references and sources at the end, as well as some cooking tips. So stay through to the end to see those. Vitamin B6, or pyridoxine, is composed of six compounds, with pyridoxal 5-phosphate, otherwise known as PLP, being the most active form available for use within the body. B6 assists more than 60 enzymes within your body to carry out their function and role within the body. These include the breakdown of carbohydrates, protein and fat, supporting the immune system and maintaining adequate levels of homocysteine. Homocysteine is a protein or amino acid contained in a range of foods such as nuts, meat and dairy and is broken down and assimilated in the body by B6 and also B12, which we'll talk about in another episode. If homocysteine levels in the body remain unchecked and they get elevated, it can lead to heart problems, dementia, and even the chances of stroke. The recommended dietary allowance or daily value or daily intake is 1.3 milligrams. And that's for a garden variety, stress-free life. If you do find that in your current position, you're having significant emotional stress, physical stress, uh, if you're breastfeeding, then the upper tolerance level ranges up to two milligrams. In my research, there was also several mentions of individuals over the age of 50 really requiring this particular B vitamin in the upper tolerance level of two milligrams. The following are the highest whole food sources of B6. So these are not supplements, these are the highest whole food sources. First cap off the rank is salmon. So a six ounce or 170 gram cooked salmon contains 1.6 milligrams or 94%. So nearly your whole recommended daily intake in one piece of six ounce salmon. Next up is chicken breast, which is on par with salmon. So again, the same serving size, six ounce or 170 grams of cooked lean chicken breast contains 1.6 milligrams or 94%. Pork, same serving size as the salmon and chicken breast, so six ounces or 170 grams of lean cooked pork contains 0.9 milligrams or 54%. Beef just comes under pork, so six ounces or 170 grams of lean cooked beef contains 0.8 milligrams or 48% of the daily value. The rest are vegetarian and vegan options. So we've got sweet potato, which is one cup. Cooked, contains 0.6 milligrams or 35%. We've got bananas, one cup of bananas, contains 0.6 milligrams or 35%. A medium baked potato, contains 0.5 milligrams or 32%. So a third of your daily intake there in one medium baked potato. A medium avocado, contains 0.5 milligrams, again 32%. And finally, and this is quite a favorite among people, if you're okay with nuts, is pistachio nuts. So one ounce or a 28 gram handful contains 0.5 milligrams or 32%. So you can get a third of your daily intake in a handful of pistachio nuts. In relation to toxicity, generally speaking, it would only be through the supplement form that you could reach toxic levels. So if you are taking a supplement for B6 and you're having very high levels, the following symptoms may be revealed. The first one is ataxia, which is a loss of body movement and control over the movements that you have within your body. Nausea and also neuropathy, where you lose the feeling in your hands and feet and the extremities of your body. A last word on toxicity there that you're probably looking at increasing your risk of experiencing these particular symptoms and side effects if you're above one gram a day. A vitamin B6 deficiency often occurs when other B vitamins are also deficient in the body, particularly vitamin B12 
and vitamin B9. A mild deficiency may have no symptoms, but a more prolonged deficiency over an extended period of time may include the following. Skin conditions such as psoriasis and eczema, depression, confusion and mental cloudiness, and lowered immunity. Another piece of information that I came across in my research is that adequate levels of B6 in the blood was associated with lower incidence of cancer. And obviously if there was a deficiency over a prolonged period, that could have implications as to the susceptibility for an individual to develop cancer. And finally with cooking, just remembering that the B vitamins are water soluble. So trying to retain those juices if you've got the meats, trying to retain the juices that come off and the fats that leak out. If you're boiling any of the vegetables, trying to retain that water as well. And if you're cooking vegetables, if you can, looking at steaming them, as I mentioned in previous videos on the vitamins and minerals, which tends to enable you to retain more of the vitamin content within the food. That's it for today. If you've got anything to share about vitamin B6 or any of the other vitamins, please let me know in the comments below. As always, I ask that you keep well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.